Hey everybody, come on, Sava. How's everybody doing? Awesome. My name, yeah. <laughs> My name is Jay. Everybody calls me Lodge. I'm an engineer um, at Protocol Labs, Outer Core Engineering. I do mostly file coin stuff there. I've done a little bit of snarks and a little bit of lurk, but nobody really talks about that. Um, I love learning about new uh, cryptography. I do think cryptography is punk rock and it's going to change the world. That's why I'm here. Um, I, I believe it or not, I do run on a torn, possibly missing menis right meniscus. I love world travel, hiking, and the proud father of two insufferable beasts named Newton and Darwin. So yeah, today we're going to talk about uh, Filecoin data tool tools, and basically, um, this is this is our agenda, and I, I want to cover like kind of go through the basics of uh, what. I know this may not be the audience for it, but I want to kind of lay the foundation for what Filecoin is, what a deal, what a Filecoin deal is, and then we'll get into how that kind of why we need to have Filecoin data tools um, to to uh, help with the deal flow, and then I'm going to get in, into each uh, each individual um, portion, uh, each individual each individual component of the the stack. So yeah, as everybody here knows, Filecoin is a decentralized, efficient, robust platform that stores all of humanity's data, over 3,000 storage providers worldwide. Um, the ecosystem itself has 400 apps, uh, over 75 uh, venture-funded startups, 60 teams in accelerator, accelerator programs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the easy version of how Filecoin works, as everybody here knows, is that we car up a file, we send it to... to uh, we, we build uh, deal parameters negotiated with different storage providers um, and then deliver the, the data over to the storage providers and, um, and then the data, integri data integrity checks happen on the back end. Very, very simple version. Um, and that kind of gives us, gives us this really, really great uh, pricing model, um, com very, very competitive pricing model, uh, which makes Filecoin very, very cool to work with. So that's it. That's my talk. Filecoin works. Thank you. Just kidding. <laughs> so the reason I'm really here is that the, it's, it sounds like a simple process, but end to end, when you actually dig into the weeds, um, it's not quite as simple as Dropbox yet. Um, so what you what we really need to do to get data into Filecoin um, is data preparation. So we got to car things up, um, and that's a very, very, very heavy process. Uh, encrypt the data potentially, compress the data. Make sure you have the processing power bad with the to, with your data. Uh, make sure you apply for data cap uh, early um, because that's that can be a process. Um, then you're going to select your Filecoin client. So most people use Lotus. Uh, Venus is out there. Uh, there's also Forest. Um, then you set up your Filecoin client. Oh, by the way, did you uh, did you set up uh, did you set up your data cap yet? Don't forget to set up your data cap. Um, then you actually create the the Filecoin storage deal. So specify the amount, the pr set the price, provide the details, find the storage provider, negotiate the storage deal, <gasps> store the data on Filecoin, um, and then monitor and renewal your storage data. So not sure if my grandmother can do that yet. <coughs> So what we've decided to do at Outer Core Engineering is unite the tooling, right? We want to bring all of these processes together and all of these open source uh, repositories together that, you know, all, all those processes that I just spoke of, um, basically the functionality of them are in 10 to 15 different rep repositories in at least three different programming languages um, on different platforms. So what we wanted to do is kind of bring all of these things together into one um, corner of the universe, um, and really, really like capture it as a a product, right? Instead of saying, "Okay, you're a consulting engagement, ship it, get paid, walk away," um, that's not really a great model for creating software, in, in my opinion. Um, so we want to bring all, the, yeah, again, we want to bring all the repositories in one spot. Um, we have deal making expertise, so we're the team that's that's built Estuary version one. If, has everybody here heard of Estuary or played around a little bit with Estuary? Okay, it's similar to Web 3.0 dot storage. Um, so yeah, we we learned a lot of good lessons of what to do and, and good lessons of what not to do, right? Um, and we've been able to take that knowledge and really, really, really apply an opinionated architecture. Um, and by doing that and by getting 11 engineers' heads all into one room, um, 
it gives us room for deep, deep optimization. Um, we have an SP on the team, which is really cool. It really helps us like drive requirements. Uh, he's been awesome. His name's Jason. Uh, reach out to him on the Slack if you if you if you guys are on the Filecoin Slack. Very cool guy. Um, again, he really really drives a lot of what we we build because you know his business relies on it. Um, and then we've got architects and engineers that are you know specifically. Uh, uh, send data out to, to Filecoin, and that's uh, Bill, Schreckenst uh, Bill Schreckenstein, Shrek. Um, so one of the big optimi the optimizations that we've done is uh, we've uh, optimized the comp calculation. So one of the like slowest things um, when you're carring files up is is doing comp um, and by taking like really really taking a close look at the the code and um, our infrastructure and combining those two, uh, we've really, really optimized fast comp -E. And if you look at this chart, uh, our then lower is better. Our delta comp -E calculations are quite a bit lower um, than the existing car and uh, comp -E, stream comp -E, uh, calculations out there. Uh, the second thing we've we've done is again we we want an opinionated architecture, right? So um, we've got our own infrastructure which is really cool. Um, so we can take, we're able to onboard data really, really fast because we can just like stand up a slice of our own optimized uh, infra and get customers going fast. Oh, there we go. And again, we're just getting started. So version two or version one of our product of FTT is only out uh, for a couple of months. So again, so yeah, let's get into first principles. So everybody here knows what a, what a deal is, what a Filecoin deal is, right? Deal is the core mechanism, which Filecoin stores data. Proposition between client storage provider defines what, when, price, how, when, where. There we go. Oh. Um, what, uh, maybe everybody, does everybody familiar with EDE, online deals versus offline import deals? Yes, you. I know that. I know the storage providers are. I don't think everybody here may not be. This is this is something I didn't know when I first started at Protocol Lab. So I'm going to give a quick demo. Ida, you're going to be my storage provider since you're an awesome storage provider. So, to demonstrate what an EDE online deal is, I'm going to send you a picture of this apple. This apple is my data. So I'm sending you a picture. That's my deal. You want to take the deal? Here you go. Great. Now, that's, that's, that happened fast. Oops, I lost that. Anyway, that happened fast, and that was instant, and that's, that's what an online deal looks like. An offline deal is me taking a picture of that piano over there and sending it to Ide and saying, hey, Ide, you accept that deal? Yes. We'll do the piano thing later, right? Um, so yeah. All right, J Lodge, let's talk about Filecoin data tools already. All right, so to kind of encapsulate all these problems and all these issues um, with the existing uh, workflows, we've created a set of tools called Filecoin data tools. Um, and today I'm going to really, really dig into Delta. Again, we probably won't be able to do the demos um, because uh, we don't have great Wi-Fi here, and I'd qu I don't have my computer unless, Floor, you want to start run my demos for me, which I assume that's, that's probably a no. <laughs> All right, cool. So, yeah, FD2, FDD, FDT, um, and Filecoin data infrastructure are an effort to build the scaffolding around the Filecoin network um, to support developers, data owners, um, and entrepreneurs that want to work with Filecoin. Um, it... It really addresses two core users, um, or I guess two core clients. The uh, the vanilla use case for Filecoin, which is you know just archive your data, get it in there, and not really worry about fast retrieval. And then we're I guess the lessons we've learned from Estuary is that there are a lot of users that really want to have fast retrieval. So we're working on building that layer on top um, with a project called product called Edge UR. And so yeah, why, why would we go this route? We want a decentralized, accessible, durable system that's cost effective um, and really, really easy to integrate. So Delta, and that's my beautiful cat Darwin, by the way. 
Delta is a, a suite of open source tools specifically for archiving uh, to the Filecoin network. So this is the part of Estuary that we tore out um, and does all the, the really fast, really efficient deal making. Um, why use the Delta technology st stack? Well, it's, it's free, right? Free is great. Um, we've split it again into a, a, micro, a, a deal making microservice. Um, so the idea it was to just sort of isolate that, that functionality um, so we can uh, really, really make sure we optimize it and make sure it's fast. So uh, when you upload a file, it computes the piece commitment for you, uh, prepares the network storage deal proposal. Um, you're able to attach a designated wallet, transfer a miner for online or end-to-end -end deals, um, and then send deal proposals for offline EDE deals like we did with eDay. Um, architecturally, uh, it's just built as, it's, uh, everything's built in Golang. Um, we have developed, with the help of uh, Jeremy, back when he was working for, <laughs> for the team, um, an IPFS node called, a uh, light IPFS node we call YPFS, um, and that's kind of built into this architecture, uh, the Delta architecture. So when you push a file up to Delta, it immediately becomes available on IPFS. As the deal is being, uh, as the the six deals are being um, generated in the background, so you're able to really, really have access to the data fast. Um, and so again, the features we got deal preparation all the way down to uh, you know checking deal status, optional SP selection, etc. And this is sort of what the deal flow looks like um, end to end pictorially, right? So again, the data gets pinned. Then all the all the like the piece commitment calculation deal proposal and the finally the transfer happens, and then it splits off into both either the end to end or the the import deals. Um, so Delta allows you to do minor assignment, which is really cool. Um, so instead of just kind of trusting whoever's uh, you know trusting whatever platform it, to do a minor selection. For you, you can you can put it right into the request and say, "Hey, I want to I want to make a deal with Eday, you know, I want to make a deal with you know three other people, right?" Um, and so you can just pass pass that right along with your file. Um, wallet assignment, which is really cool, um, you can set the wallet uh, right on the server or the instance that you're running, and you can also um, you can also support offline signing. So you you have your own wallet. You can sign the transaction and then send it over to Delta. Um, and then we've got replication factors for deal repair and retry. Um, we do max the uh, replications up to six. And then more configuration. So the interplanetary net network indexer announcements. Um, we can turn that flag on or off. Uh, deal durations, deal start and dates, et cetera. And this is a little bit tough to see. Um, but this is the best, I think, demo that we're going to get. I'm glad I kind of snuck this slide in before. Um, these, these are just curl statements. And really, that's the kind of the point of all this, is um, we shouldn't have to deal with you know, writing Go code or compiling Rust or anything like that to push data up into Filecoin, and then like doing all that data processing afterwards. You should be able to just go curl, put. And that's, that's kind of what this thing does, right? And then this is another example of uploading with a wallet. I can't show you the demos, unfortunately. Do you, you want to try? you want to try clicking on online deal? Let's see if it works. You just, need to you just need to click on that box. I think it's like a YouTube link. If not, it's OK. That's okay, no worries. Just trust me, it works. <laughs> if you want to see it working, uh, come in, I'll be around all this afternoon. I'm happy to give demos. Uh, and this is what the response looks like. Um, so uh, again, in kind of amalgamating everything together, we also wanted to uh, make sure that we have a comprehensive CLI in place for deal making, repair CLI, car generation. You can call like the, the same executable that runs as a daemon, you can actually just run it as a CLI and generate your cars. Your piece commitment computations, wallet CLI, everything's all in one place, which is kind of the intention, right? 
and this is this is an example of uh, car file generation uh, running Delta on a directory and carring it up with a split with a splitter. <coughs> and again, um, this is the P here's an example of piece commitment calculation. Um, we've got three different modes. Uh, right now, the the fast mode's experimental. It only really works on specialized hardware, but it is um, considerably faster. So. And then we've got a direct storage making CLI, if you so choose. Um, and then, you know, we've, we've, again, this has been out in the wild for maybe, so officially three months, unofficially like five months, and we've already got use cases, right? We've got, um, you know, earth imagery uh, data, uh, Ukraine cultural backup, which is really, really close to my heart. It's really awesome. Um, and then a, a genomics uh, with ghost bites, so and several more. Uh, we do work with uh, over 100 ecosystem storage providers. Uh, Jason Sihelka, that's our guy. Uh, he's also an engineer on a team, as I mentioned before. Um, and again, if you want to just get started with it, just go to http delta dot store, um, or we can run it for you. Um, this is we. This is sort of the intention of us having like an infrastructure available is that you know if you want if you don't want to mess around with, you know, pulling code down and compiling it and s standing it up, uh, akin to the, to like our philosophy of just getting going fast, you can snap our fingers and it takes. The last time I checked, it took about three minutes to have the whole uh, the Delta and the Edge UR stack stood up for customers, and most customers do prefer that route. And so, okay, Delta is the deal-making engine. Um, and so customers that want to uh, do hot storage, uh, use a product, use a microservice slash product as part of FTT called Edge UR. And this it's, is the, the lightweight retrieval gateway and, and retrieval node. So it handles the data uploads and retrievals using one key. Um, again, acts as a hot retrieval layer, layer uh, highly available through any IPFS gateway. So it's really important for us to uh, speak both the graph sync, which is like the, uh, the backend file coin protocol, as well as the IPFS protocol for fast retrieval up front. And this is a really, really bad picture <laughs> of what it looks like. Um, so users, um, interact with the edge you are through HTTP. So you just download your NFTs, download whatever you, your cat photos, all through edge you are. And it's all backed by, uh, by Delta. So all the deal making happens in the back transparently. Um, I'm going to skip this one. So we have white labeled edge UR case studies. Um, the most, I guess the, the, the first case study really was taking estuary and carving it up. And estuary version two has uh, edge UR as as its as one of its components. And getting started with edge UR, just jump over to uh, the Delta Edge repository. Um, and again, you guys can ask me after this. I would normally <laughs> bounce to the website, but I can't really demo it with a computer right now. <laughs> so, <coughs> and yeah, this is this was the live demo. Um, catch me later. We can do that. And I guess the last uh, portion of Delta I'd like to talk about is a product called Delta Dataset Manager. Um, it's designed for ar archival data sets. This is really for SPs. Um, it's fully standalone, no dependency on Boost or Lotus, which is really cool. All you need is Go and Rust, which I don't know if that's cool or not, but it's, it's, it's all right. Uh, what problem does it solve? Um, they need uh, data onboarders need a way to manage your data sets. Pre preparers need to uh, to be able to pull detailed statistics, um, and this should be decoupled from all other operations. So yeah, again, data data onboarders, archivists, um, and storage providers. So how does DDM work? So DDM kind of allows you to create data sets with names, replication counts, and deal durations, and attach content with data sets. So it's like content with metadata, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so you, like, if you've got a, somebody that's uploaded car files, for example, up to an IPFS node, they can hand you this special uh, content data set, and you can just start 
importing data, which is really awesome. Um, you can add wallets and associate them with the, the data sets, uh, add storage providers to the data sets, very cool, um, and create replication profiles. Uh, I'm just going to skip over importer because I think we're getting close to time. Um, we've really spent a lot of time, um, I guess, in the first two, three months that we kind of went down this journey, we spent a lot of time re-architecting the back end. We're now just jumping into the front end, and DDM is the first product that really has a nice, comprehensive user interface, which I would love to show you, but I just can't right now, unfortunately. Come and see me later. And then very, very quickly, I want to talk about Ptolemy. So Ptolemy is our, our data preparation library, um, really, really designed to process really big d data sets, large data sets, uh, typically, combined in, uh, typically confined to S3 uh, buckets. I'm just going to skip over this. If you're interested in the repo, go ahead and jump over to Trex uh, repo, who's built, who built uh, Ptolemy. It's a really, really cool. Uh, little thing, it's Python. And then finally, I just want to touch really, really quickly on, you know how I mentioned before that, you know, users are able to uh, slice out a, 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 I guess, deploy to our infrastructure. We kind of labeled that, white labeled it and called it FDI, um, which is pretty cool. You, you're able to take like the infra all the infrastructure as code, and if you potentially want to just stand up your own instance of FDI, you can just pull down the code and it works, right? So what's next? Integrate. Um, different use cases. Use your imagination. Now that you have uh, Delta and Edge UR, you're able to do a lot of really, really cool things. Uh, you can build you know, the, a video hosting, po potentially a video hosting uh, platform. Co-host large data sets, P2P video streaming. Use your imagination. Uh, for SPs, uh, providing an inge a really cool ingestion layer for your customers. Oh, that's nicer. <laughs> image in image. Um, so yeah, this probably looks really messy. <laughs> um, and then, really, what else is next? And this is like this is like my call. If you if if you want to uh, listen to one slide, please listen to this one. Um, upload your data. We wear multiple hats. We're all engineers uh, in Articore Engineering, but we do work directly with cl customers and clients to help them onboard their pebby bytes of data as quickly and efficiently as possible, completely free of charge uh, using our tooling. So please reach out to us on Ecosystem Dev, Slack channel, or contact me directly at lodge at protocol.ai. Um, this is just a list of our repositories. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Hide. What's the first one? Yeah. So yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. That's a very good question. Delta does in fact handle hot copies temporarily. So when I push data up to Delta directly to just to Delta, it will serve back your data over IPFS, because it's an IPFS node itself, um, while the deals are being made. Once the deals are, are made, then it cleans up the IPFS. The, if you want a hot, cop, hot retrievable, more permanent copy, then you have to use Edge UR in conjunction with Delta. We have not implemented that functionality yet, but let's talk. Yeah, yeah let's talk after that. That sounds interesting. In, really interesting. It sounds like something that might go into Delta D, DDM or like that sort of the SP suite of, of things. That's cool. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely interested in that. Let's, let's talk about that, and we'll get Jason on a call. I'm, I'm sure he'd love that. Any other questions? Anything online? Any tweets? <laughs> I assume no. <laughs> no. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs>